Hey guys, Ronnie Lee here, The Naked Medium. Uh, that would be better. Let's see. We need a book. <gasps> let's take the Bible. I have many of them. So, we're actually going to pick that one to give me some leverage for this webcam. And then, I'm actually going to reference my other Bible. So, <laughs> Bible's useful in all forms. So anywho, I wanted to make this video today because um, I kept feeling, um, I kept getting this message. This message kept coming across to me that I needed to get my Bible and I needed to really spend some time um, reading because someone had made a comment to a best friend, to my best friend, and they were in the discussion of this. So this came up in relation to what they were talking about so my best friend had told this lady she said well you know that's funny because my best friend is a psychic medium and so the lady said oh you know what the bible says about that so she goes what now mind you my friend is she was very into the church um studied her bible i remember when i first met her the stories that she would tell me i'm like how do you read the bible like that it's like this this magical place you know she she just pulls stories and movies out of it like she really loves reading and she really knows her scripture so you know she said oh really and the lady said yeah she's not supposed to use them she said well what do you say when I tell you that God's the one that gave her this gift and the lady said yeah but she's not supposed to use it <laughs> I mean I laughed when she told me because of course it just sounds crazy but I understand where this woman was coming from to a degree. The reason, let me um, go back to why I want to make this video and then I'll fast forward to what I'm talking about right now. I was called to make this video because there are many people that I teach and there are many people that come to me for readings and I see a lot of the people that come to me for readings almost like, this is a secret. You know, like, they're coming to my door like, yeah, this is the CIA. You got the passcode for me to let you in? It's like, what are you, who are you hiding from? And then um, there are people that I am teaching to develop their spiritual gifts. That they already are aware of them, but they have these blocks up because they're fearful of actually living that gift out. So for the people that have to be in secrecy and for the people that have these gifts, and are blocking their gift because of their own fear, I felt called to make this video to you. And for the other people that are out there that are judging people with the gifts that we possess. Now, watching my videos on my channel, you know that I believe we all have these gifts. I do believe that each person may be heightened in one gift compared to the other, and then therefore it's just up to you to develop the other parts of your gift but to me I believe we all have them I believe these are essential tools to living here on this earth and finding our purpose and fulfilling that so it's like I said before in my previous videos I believe that our spiritual gifts are like a GPS to navigate through this world so anywho let me go back to what this lady said so my best friend, you know, when she called and told me about it, I laughed it off. And then I felt, you know, that's just, that sucks. Because people are, people put themselves in a position to judge you not knowing your relationship with God. Like God's supposed to go to them and be like, hey, Sue, me and her be kicking it like real hard. Okay, so leave her alone. It's none of your business. It's none of your business with this person's relationship is with God, and it's not for you to judge their relationship with God. Because it always blows my mind how many people say these things when they have no idea that everything that I do is because God told me to do it. But because God did not tell them or the other people that have these gifts, because God did not tell the people around them, then it's like, whoa, it can't be done. So I don't know. You know who's in control, God or man? That's a question for you to answer. So anyhow, um, I have my journal because yesterday when me and my best friend were talking, I was writing like just lightning speed, writing some things down because she was reading scriptures out of the Bible and it's like as she was reading them, I was interpreting them differently than I ever had before. Now, when I was younger, there were certain books in the Bible that I just loved, Proverbs being one of them. It was my go-to. Proverbs, Job, because I felt like I suffered so 
much <laughs> me and Job related, um, was Proverbs, Job, and Romans. So I really, aside from reading those, and when I would read other books of the Bible, I would get to a certain point and I would fall asleep. And I mean, it happened all the time. I would drink coffee, fall asleep, do this, fall asleep. And until years went by and I actually started to go on the journey of my own um, spiritual growth and my own self-discovery, I would pick up the Bible and I would see it differently than what I had before. So all of a sudden I could read it for hours and just be mesmerized by everything. But my mother would read the Bible and she would perceive it totally different. And if I get someone else, they'll read the Bible and they'll perceive it totally different. Which I do believe strongly that when God speaks to us, we are all we are all one. We are all supposed to be united. But I do believe that whatever our mission is here, that when we read something, you may perceive it one way and I can perceive it another. Because it is fit to what it is that I'm supposed to carry out. And what you see is fit to what you're supposed to do. And you can read one scripture millions of times over and receive a different message every time you read that scripture. So it's all divinely guided. It's all put to you the way that it should be put to you. But now there are some things that um, I want to address in today's video. Kind of quickly, let's see. Um, one of the things is the scripture that everyone likes to go to when it's talked about, when conversation comes up about psychic mediums. Oh, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that, the Bible says. So I'm going to go to that scripture. Well, I'm going to go to the one that I have found, I'm sure there are many others, but Deuteronomy 18, um, verses 9 through 12. So, and this is when it talks about not seeking psychics, and it says, the Lord your God instructs you to not seek psychics. Now, and then it, it's on and on. I'm paraphrasing, okay? But this is, I, I did get that, I did quote that correct, the Lord your God. Now remember, back then, lords were the people that governed your country or governed your town or, you know, your community. So you looked to them and you called them lords. You had to. You had to bow to them. You had to call them lords. Those were your gods. There were many gods in that environment. So it's almost like the way we look at our president, okay, he would be considered a Lord God. Not to me, not to you in this time, but back then that's how he would be perceived and that's how he would be, um, how you would present yourself to him, Lord, Lord our God. And you would bow and do whatever else, heck you else need to do. Um, so when it says that, one thing that I really want to say is just knowing the history of that, are we getting that mixed up in reading the Bible saying, okay, they're talking about God? When it specifically says, Lord, your God. These are talk, this scripture, that phrase is talking about the man, the king, the, um, what was the word that I wanted to get out there? What was the title that I was fishing for? Um, anyway, I'll come back to it. But the man, the king that governed your nation, your community, your village was considered a lord and like i said before there are many god there were many gods that were looked up to so this is where you do some research because remember what i've said in other videos do your own research don't just take what i say and run with it do your own research research keyword okay i had made a facebook post today and it said it talked about where would you hide the truth and I said, well, I'll answer that in front of you. I would hide anyone that wanted to hide something so true and powerful would hide it directly in front of you. And I've always read the Bible. And I've, every time, ever since I was a kid, I would read the Bible. And I would say there's something about this Bible. I have, I have a feeling, a deep feeling that what we're reading is actually more simple and we're complicating it. And I feel that anyone that has read the Bible, you receive inspiration, you get great motivation, you feel loved, but you know deep down in your core there's something about the Bible. There's a deeper meaning about the Bible that you haven't really yet cracked. And um, 
I, I do believe that that goes, a lot of the reasoning that it hasn't been cracked yet is when one person reads the Bible, and let's just say pastor, minister, when one person reads the Bible and shares that perception to a whole congregation, there are many people that will go out and have that conversation with God themselves and say, well, what does this mean to me? What does this mean in, my, in the part of my life right now that I'm on? So it's like, you know, God, what is, how are you speaking to my heart? But there are many, 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 many people that will hear what the pastor says and take it in a literal sense. And that message is for me, and it means exactly this. And so you, those are not the people that are seeking. And remember, you know, I've said this before, the big thing about, um, I know when I was, you know, grew up, it's seeking you shall find. And I just don't see many people seeking. So I feel that a lot of the messages are getting mixed up, confused, or not being put out there because people aren't seeking. They're taking what was given to them and they're not questioning anything. So um, I know I'm like going, you know, I'm skipping from this to this to that. But let's go back to the scripture in Deuteronomy. So my, my feelings on this is, okay, let's not seek a psychic. The Lord your God. Let's say, okay, the Lord, the one that governs your village, your whole little town, he don't want you to seek a psychic. Of course, why not? But why did every Lord, every king have some type of oracle or prophet that they summoned in times of need? When it came to going to war, they summoned their oracle or their prophet. So why would they not want you? It's just like our government. Why is our government hiding the truth from you? Why is the media so good at hiding the truth from you? Well, because if you knew everything, then you would have power. And if all of us combined would take our power and knew the truth and use our power, this wouldn't be running the way that it is right now. It would be an anarchy. We would be like powerful. You can't stop us. We're changing this world. But unfortunately, not everyone has come to that right now. So, but my, um, I said that because, of course, these lords then were telling you not to go see psychics or not to go see oracles and prophets because that was their secret weapon. And they don't want you having that because if you knew what they knew, then they would no longer be able to control you. Period. Point blank. That's the truth. You can't deny that. And now let's go back to, you know, not seeking psychics. Well, I, that I don't understand. I get it now. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like, how can you say that? Or how can people even read that scripture and, and, and really believe it to the, um, the way that it was printed on a superficial level? Because Daniel had visions all the time. And there was actually... Let me see if I wrote it down, but there was actually a, um, it was in Daniel, when Daniel was speaking to, he had a vision of a man, and Daniel describes being really tired, and please forgive me because I thought I had written this down, but it's in Daniel, um, I thought I had written it down, sorry. You know what I will do though? I will go back and find the scripture and I will post it in the description so that you can look it up. But Daniel had a vision of a man. And in this vision, when the man came to him and was speaking to him, Daniel said that he had got tired. It's almost like he fell asleep. And it's funny to me because whenever you channel spirit, when, when you receive a vision, when spirit comes to you, you get sleepy, you get drained. Because they are using your energy to send a message through. So um, reading that scripture, I was like, whoa. Daniel was totally channeling. One, Daniel was clairvoyant. Daniel had visions left and right all up and through this Bible. So how are we telling people you should not seek psychics or oracles or visionaries when Daniel himself was clairvoyant? Moses was clairvoyant. Uh, he received visions as well. And clear cognizance. And Moses, um, if you ask me, he was doing some automatic writing as well. So now these are things that I'm not going to make an hour long video, but write these things down. Clairvoyance, clear cognizance, automatic writing. The whole Bible, if you ask me, was written automatically. And that is another form of channeling. It's when spirit channels your thoughts. And these thoughts are coming through so strong, you're writing them down like super fast. You're not even thinking. Most of the time when you do automatic writing, you don't know what is being said until you're done. And when you're done, it is a form of channeling, so you're normally very tired, you're erratic. And then once you're calm, once you've taken a nap and woke back up, you always read. And it's like, whoa, I wrote that? How did I write that? How did I even know that? 
But that is inspired by God. That is inspired by spirit written by man. Hmm, sound familiar? So Joseph was clairvoyant because he was seeing stuff too. Mary was clairvoyant because she was seeing stuff on another level. And she was also clairsentience because she knew. She had that feeling, that knowing claircognizance, that knowing that there's something deeper. And that feeling that the child she was carrying was here to do something great. Um, I'm just, these are all characteristics of spiritual gifts, okay? Ezekiel was the most clairvoyant up in the Bible, please. Really? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to calm it down. Paul, who wrote mostly everything, he wrote a lot. Guarantee he was doing some automatic writing. And um, Jesus spoke to Paul after death. And, uh, you know, Paul was writing. So it's like if Jesus already did and you're writing what Jesus is telling you, what is that? You, you tell me what that is. If somebody dies and they're telling me something and I'm writing out what they're telling me, one, that's automatic writing, two, that's clairvoyance, three, that's clear audience, because I'm able to hear, see, and write what they're giving me. I'm transporting this message from spirit into the physical form. Um, Paul was a psychic medium. We just want to make it like that because it is what it is. Here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to bust nobody's beliefs up. All I'm trying to tell you is look a little deeper. The truth is right there. You know what? Don't look a lot. Don't look deeper. It's actually right there. It's right there, point blank, like in front of you. We are taught to not see the message. Even there are presidents that have psychics. Look it up. And see, here's the thing. I know you might get a little annoyed because I'm like, look it up, do your research. But even with my students, I encourage them to research because I do not like when people get so hung up on what someone says that they block their own truth, that they don't seek what it is that they need to be seeking. You have to find the truth in your own way. So when I say look it up, it's not because I don't want to do the dirty work for you or I don't have the information. I have a lot of stuff written down. When I say look it up, it's because as a teacher, that's my thing. I love for people to learn in their own way. That's the way I learn. I, for the most part, you can sit there and talk to me all you want. But when I start getting hands-on, then that's when I'm learning. That's when I'm taking things in more. And it just surprises me how many people are like, well, how do you know this? How did you know that? How did you know this? Google, books, books. There was an old saying that, um, they used to lead, that they used to use back in the day with the slaves. And it was just hide the truth in a book because a blank is not going to know how to read. And I feel like it's still... This, this phrase is still going on today, but it's not just with black people. They ain't just hiding stuff from slaves. They're hiding stuff from everyone. The truth is plain and clear right in front of us. But half the time, ain't nobody picking up no book. If y'all ain't turning on the television or getting on Facebook, that's, that's as much research as a lot of people are doing. Pick up a book. I mean, it is your truth. But anyhow, I can go on and on forever and a day about this. Um... There are so many things that I do. Oh, I, let me say this real quick. Son of man. Jesus kept referring to himself as son of man a lot. And I feel that if when you read this scripture, it almost became it almost became clear to me that he kept saying that because he's trying to tell us, I, I'm the son of man. I'm man. I'm human. And yet I can do all of these things, which means you can do all of this too. It, that's clear. So when Jesus said, ye are all gods, you all have this power and these gifts. What is the problem? What, now you don't believe Jesus? It's like you pick and choose. I'm going to believe what Jesus says right here because it benefits me. But I'm not going to believe what Jesus says right here. So Jesus is saying that you're all God. Jesus is telling you that you are all powerful. So why don't you believe that? When you start to believe in your own power, you'll pick up this Bible and you'll read it differently. You'll go from reading it from a slavery mindset to a powerful master mindset. But until you believe that you are actually worth it, you're going to perceive everything else as not being worthy. A broken person sees things out of broken glasses. A happy, a positive, a whole person sees the world as being whole. So it's all about your perception. So what you can be reading is perceived differently because of how you feel inside. That's it for the day because I don't have a lot of stuff to do.
Um, I'm gonna probably have to make a part two because there's a lot of things that I did not touch, but I really did not want to make a 20 minute video and I'm almost there. So anyway, I'll see you guys later and I hope and pray that you find your truth. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Please like the video and subscribe.